Hello, in this video I'll be making a utility belt for the Deadpool costume I'm making. Now this can be used to make a belt for other costumes as well, like Batman for example. You just change a couple of things, maybe the colour, the material or whatever, and it'll work perfectly fine for something else. Now what's really cool about this utility belt that I have not seen anyone else do, is there's absolutely no sewing whatsoever. So it's a lot easier, a lot faster, and you can have a belt done in next to no time. So let's get cracking. So I started with the buckle. Now I've made a template here, and I've included a link to this in the description of this video. You can make this out of foam or or a sheet of plastic, it doesn't need to be strong or weight bearing or anything, it's only going to be a cosmetic piece. I 3D printed mine, um, I've stuck these bits to a piece of foam so they wouldn't blow around when I spray painted them. I've used some automotive primer and some silver paint as a base coat. I then went ahead and masked off the middle piece because that's going to be black later on, so I was very careful to make sure I masked that nice and neatly so I didn't get any overspray, and then sprayed the rest of that with a metallic red, and then peel away the masking tape very carefully to make sure I don't damage the red and then went in there with a very fine paintbrush to paint the middle bit black and that's all there is to it for the belt buckle so now onto the actual belt so what we're using is some fake brown leather final and some two inch webbing now what I've done is I've cut a section out here big enough for this and the reason I've done that is because the belt is actually what it looks like in pictures I've seen it's like a two inch belt and it kind of reduces down into like a one and a half inch belt which is about what this is so instead of doing two different ones and joining them together I think it'd be better to be one continuous strong piece with less points of potential failure so we're going to try and put this buckle on first now if I was to wrap the whole thing in this these ends when they're wrapped will struggle to fit through here so we're going to do this little inside bit first you might think you'll see the joins, but the joins will be hidden behind these things, hopefully, so that shouldn't be too bad. But we'll find out as we go. So I've cut this piece here to length. This is twice as thick as this, because it's going to completely encase this. So it's slightly too thick to do the bit in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm going to mark how much we need. Cut that off. Just like that, right. So that's that on there. So we can now put on this. Just going to put that through. See, it's not going to go through because I cut that to be that size. We have to fold this slightly. There's no way that would fit through there. Put it on there. And these sit so close, it doesn't matter anyway. So now the buckle's on there, we're going to do a quick test to make sure it wraps around my body okay. And as the buckle's in three pieces, it does actually follow the contour of my body quite nicely. Right, onto the thicker section of the belt now. So I'm doing the same thing as I did for the small part behind the buckle there. I'm just wrapping that in the fake leather stuff and taping it from the back with my duct tape. It might look a bit puffy, but when it's pulled tight around something, it becomes flat again. So I'm not looking too bad. Okay, so the belt is now covered on both sides. Only thing left to do to it now to make it wearable is to add some sort of attachment on either end, and that's what I've done. I've added some Velcro. I've put the spiky side facing out. Very important that you put the spiky side facing out because the belt isn't on properly and there's a little bit exposed, this spiky side will will rub against your suit and it could damage your suit. If you're wearing a morph suit, then it'll, uh, it'll damage the suit. So you want the spiky side facing out and then the furry side facing in. And then they'll go together like that. Now I said this was no sewing, so what you can do is you can get some Velcro that is self-adhesive. 
on the back of it you just peel a thing off and it's essentially a velcro sticker and you stick that on uh, failing that you could get the stuff that I've got that isn't uh, self adhesive and glue it on but I wouldn't recommend hot glue though it doesn't stick to this very well you could try a uh, contact adhesive that works pretty good but that's not what I'm going to do I know this is no sewing but I'm going to actually sew this on because it will be the best way to hold it on um, but if you don't want to sew then you can glue it on and get the self adhesive stuff and it's basically bang on it goes now there's a template of, uh, that I've made for the pouches you can download that, the uh, link to that is in the description of this video and that will give you one of these, there's actually two because one of the pouches on his back is slightly longer but uh, the smaller one you need to do eight of six go on the belt and two go on a thigh holster um, so yeah this is the this is the template and what you're going to need is your vinyl that on there then we're going to draw around that with that pencil. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, uh, the the grey shaded areas on this are bits that get folded in to make it look like it's not a really, really thin piece of thick leather. When you get to these little triangle bits here, you cut down this line and you fold these back. These lines here I've put on so I can line them up. Likewise with from here to here. From here to here. And here to here. So this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, and this bit all get folded over on themselves. Alright, let's cut this out. Hi. Now you can cut this out with scissors or a very sharp knife. I prefer using a knife. Right, so when it comes to this little piece here, you follow the diagonal line and you only cut in on this horizontal line as far in as this vertical bit here. So you go to here, cross to the edge, then you go straight down to here, and then you go from this little point here diagonally down to where the cut goes. So this little triangle thing and fold over down onto this big rectangle like this. Before we prep that, we're gonna prep the thing that's going in it. Now this piece of wood is one inch wide, two and three quarters inches across, and height is four inches tall, which is exactly that bit there, like that. So this is gonna make our pocket keep its shape, and it's also gonna uh, be part of how it all holds itself together without any sewing. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to pop that in the middle and wrap this around it but first of all we don't want it to look like there's a wooden thing in the pocket so we're going to want to cover that up. Black tape, this is the same stuff I've used for the, uh, the scabbards and things. Let's get on there like that, we'll fold it down, fold it down. Side. That. Okay. Do exactly the same thing to the other end. I'm going to fold along this line. Like that. I'm going to take that down. Put on bay tape. There we go. Do the same to this bit here. This so the two edges meet up and they get held down by this. Let's get on 
be easier if you had like 10 arms. Okay, one there. Strips. There we go. I want a couple of bigger pieces. We're almost done. And now what we do is we take our wooden block and that looks a bit rude. Anyway, take our wooden block and we stick that in there. We fold this over like this. A bit of tape, stick it down, so it doesn't go anywhere. Take this piece, pull it nice and tight, fold this over, making sure that this edge at the top here is nice and neat. Take the tape, stick that down, sit the bottom down. These bits here, that's what these thin pieces are for. Stick that on, pull it tight, stick it down. With this tape being on here as well, means these are gonna stick to it better. These wouldn't stick very well to a piece of wood. This wood was cut from a very long piece. I've still got tons of it left. Okay, that's nearly done. That goes up there, over there, and down there. Uh, so the next bit, all we're gonna do is you've going to make a little uh, pretend thingy and these are the bits I painted earlier so this here this is a piece of plastic this is a small piece of plastic and I've cut it out of a bit of plastic pipe actually this plastic pipe here that I made the sword handles with I cut a piece off I then took some really sharp shears Snipped up it lengthways. After I've done that, I took my heat gun, heated off, heated up that little piece until it started going a bit floppy, and then laid it out flat and put something on top of it that was flat to hold it flat. And I had a very thin sheet of plastic. Obviously, you can buy thin sheets of plastic, but I already had that plastic. It was just the wrong shape. Anywho. What we want is this little thin thing here. And in case you're wondering, this is three and a half centimeters long by one and a half centimeters tall. There's a very teeny little hole there. We've got a teeny little screw here. And we've got this here. This isn't an actual little pop rivety thing. This is a little screw cap thing to cover screw heads. It was black. It's now silver, so I painted it and it'll work perfect. So you can put that little screw through a little teeny washer, put that in here. That's just to stop the uh, screw head from digging its way through the plastic. Screw that in a bit. Then we're going to pull this nice and tight out over the top, make sure it's straight, and then we're going to decide where we want these. Now I want it so there's a slight little overhang at the bottom. So we're going to position that so there's a slight little overhang. So if, imagine if it was split into say thirds, there's a third of it hanging over the bottom, maybe not even that much, just say it's split into quarters. There's a quarter of it hanging over the bottom, just make sure it's in the middle. And once that's on there, you're now going to screw into the wood. What a freaking genius! cover that screw up by going boom like that now that's all fine and well but how the hell do we now attach these to the belt do we have to sew them on no because we've just invented that as well and if this loops up around here we've got a big hole here so you take this and you just thread the thing through like that and it really is 
that simple. And that took, what, five minutes to do that? Hardest part is cutting out the bloody wood. Right, so that's that on there. The only problem is they slide up and down like this. You can just put a couple of screws, one there and one there, that's gonna go through this, through the belt and into the wood, which will hold that permanently like that. So it'll be a case of taking another teeny weeny washer, teeny weeny screw, bang, bang, job done. And that's the belt finished. So I'm gonna screw those on and we'll have a finished belt. And here's the belt all finished. It's turned out really well. And I've attached those pouches to the belt here with a little screw on the back. So the screw goes through the pouch, through the belt, and then back into the pouch, into the wood on the inside, which keeps them on there really securely. I haven't done that for the big one on the back because you need to slide that across to be able to get to the belt code. You better put that on and take it off. So that'll be it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel to keep an eye out on future projects, which will include Deadpool Swords and be sure to check out the social media links in the description of this video. And remember, you don't have to be great at making to make something great. Thanks for watching, bye bye.